Hi everyone, welcome back to another post-production tutorial. In today's video, we're gonna look at an entire music video workflow. So from start to finish, all the way from client communication, conforming, look development, and then our final delivery, we're gonna cover all of it. This is my first YouTube video that shows a full workflow for an actual job that I color graded. So if you are at all confused about what the color grading process is or what happens at different stages of the color grade, this video is for you. So to start off with, I needed a music video to grade. Now, I wanted to be able to use this on my channel and for commercial clients, that is a no-go. You've gotta be really careful about sharing client work. So always make sure you get permission and consent forms if you ever post any material that you work with online. My solution to this was to find a passion project or non-commercial project that the filmmakers would be happy to collaborate with me on. So I made a Facebook post. I went ahead and said, I'd do it for you for free if I can use your footage on my channel. That worked out really well. The fantastic directing duo, The Unkindness, reached out to me via email and we set up a time to meet. The way I really like to start any new color grading project is to hop on a video call with all of the key personnel. So the director, producer, the DOP, anyone who wants to be involved really. So we can talk about the grade and the look. This particular music video was really fun, a really humorous treatment. Soldiers running around in the woods being controlled by a little kid who has toy soldiers. So a really funny idea and a really creative canvas to build some really fun looks. Can you explain a little bit about how you guys came together to collaborate on this project? The budget was so low, there was so little we could do. I mean, the inter I mean, basically most of the video is shot in natural light, there's no lighting. As Raj said, no budget. We're out in the sand dunes in a forest, running through toy toy bushes. We just don't really have the crew to throw up big lights or do anything like that. We did have some key images which you, you had found. Yes, yeah, some soldiers in gas masks and it had this very, um, urine yellow um, mm. smoke going on and it had these very um, sort of royal blue range in the shadows and so that, that sort of really appealed. It was great to talk with the team because they did raise a few things. One, the light was changing quite a bit. They didn't really have the time or budget to rig substantial light so they relied a lot on natural light and they used diffusion smoke to hide some of those inconsistencies and to add some texture to the frame. I actually just opened up the Lumetri presets in Premiere the directors also shared with me their look document, which was amazing. They had gone into Premiere Pro, applied some speed looks, and just had some creative discussions around the grade. They also had some great imagery and references for me to look at too. This meeting was also a prime time to fill out our project form, so get all of the key details that I'd need and make sure that there's no nasty surprises when I'm in the grade. So now all the technical and the creative discussions are done, I waited until the edit was locked, and then they sent me the assets to download. Now, there are always oddities and back and forths when you do the conform process. So we chose to use the rendered file workflow or the scene cut workflow, where the editor would export out the full clip and I would bring that into Resolve and cut it up using the scene cut tool. The first time the editor sent me the file, um, I'm not sure whether it was an export issue or an upload issue, uh, but the MXF just wasn't working. It just wasn't reading as a standard video file. So I had to ask for that to be resupplied. Once that was resupplied, the MXF worked well. I brought that into Resolve and we used the Scene Cut tool to cut that up. Now, not everyone knows that you can use Scene Cut in two places in the timeline, one in the edit timeline and one in the media pool. I always prefer to use the edit timeline because it gives you a little bit more flexibility after the cuts have been made. If you click on the timeline menu, detect scene cuts. Now the advantage of doing it from here is that if you did it in the media pool, each subclip would be a locked subclip. You couldn't extend the frames left or right. Doing it this way, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. And once the cuts have been made on the timeline, you could still drag the clips out left and right because it's referencing the one source clip rather than in the media pool, it would have brought in lots of mini subclips. Now in this timeline, there was a few crossfades and a few visual effects elements. So what the client did is they grouped all of those elements at the end of the timeline. It's really important when following the rendered file workflow that if there's any crossfades, they're provided with handles at the end of the timeline so the colors can grade them fully. If you have a music video that's using the conform workflow, so using an EDL, XML, or AAF to rebuild the timeline, go check out my video up the top which will explain how to conform in Resolve, how to sync check, all of those great things. So go check that out now if that's the workflow that you're using. In this case, the editor also left all of the visual effects shots at the end of the timeline, rather than leaving the visual effects plates nestled in their positions in the timeline. I would normally not recommend this, so I had to go ahead, take those visual effects shots, 
and place them back into the timeline. These were just the visual effects plates, they will be replaced, but I wanted to make sure I had a full timeline before we started the grade. With the conform complete, I went back to my email chain to have a look at some of the reference images that the Unkindness Directing Duo had sent across to me. I imported some of their reference images and some of the images from their initial look document so I could bring it into Resolve, use a reference wipe, and start to build an inspired by look, taking what I liked from each still. At this stage, I wasn't too concerned about rippling this grade across the entire timeline. I was just playing around with some looks, identifying some hero shots with the aim of sending a sequence or two across to the client so they could gauge the look and start to have some initial feedback. I use Frame.io, it's just a really great platform. Clients can comment on the right hand side with exact time code references. They can even draw things on the frame, lines, arrows, they can circle key elements. It's really useful and I really enjoy using Frame.io. They identified some elements that were a little bit messy. Um, for example, I had a warm gradient that worked quite well for the band shots, applied en masse to more shots than it should have. So again, they pointed these out. I didn't mind too much about this. This is a rough pass, just to get a feel of what kind of direction I want to push and pull these images towards. From those two initial 30 second videos that I exported out to Frame.io, I got some really helpful feedback and I went ahead and applied my first grade pass to the entire product. I have a great reference library of stills from some of my favorite films. And for the scenes with a kid, we initially went down a Dunkirk inspired by look, which was really great. We did end up toning that back a little bit more to match the warmth of the forest. But again, this is just a really great starting point. It enabled us to apply a grade to all of the shots. Uh, what I ended up doing for the band is ended up putting them to a group just so that one, I could view them easily, but two, so I could make some adjustments en masse to these clips. On this first pass, there was a little bit of ambiguity for a couple of scenes in which way they wanted to push. So I went ahead and just made a decision to make some of these scenes cooler. Now in the end, we decided not to go that route and we kept it all quite warm. But this first pass, because it's a music video, allowed me as a colorist to have a little bit of creativity. So I really enjoyed applying a few different looks and seeing what stuck and what didn't. The second grade pass, I can probably summarize as consistency. Again, as I noted before, the few scenes that I had made slightly cooler, they didn't really like. So we went ahead to make those warm and to make that consistent across the entire video. This is also when some of the visual effects shots were coming in. So I went ahead and imported them, realized there wasn't visual effects mats for a few shots. So I requested them to make sure that I could isolate the grade and just grade the visual effects elements on their own. This is always a really fun part of the grade. And the client was actually a little surprised how much I toned down the dirt explosions on the beach. For me, it felt natural and realistic for that dirt to be quite dark to match the iron sand color of the beach. So this was a fun moment where they were surprised, but happy the direction that I went and they had a few tweaks just to make sure that there was nothing lost in the detail of those explosions. The biggest challenge of the second pass was just matching the band material consistently across the entire video. There was a lot of different lighting conditions and a few problem shots that really required some extra work. In particular, there was a close-up of one of the band members at the end, which had quite an intense blue color cast, and getting that skin tone natural took quite a while to really work into place. After one more round of minor feedback tweaks, I went ahead to prep the timeline for delivery. In this case, what I needed to do is extend out all of the crossfade material, regroup that back at the end of the timeline, and go ahead and export. I'm on a Windows PC, so instead of exporting out a ProRes QuickTime, I'll export out a DNX HR QuickTime. Exporting out a DNX HR HQX compared to a ProRes 4444 is very similar, so there's no downsides really, apart from if the client specifically needs that ProRes format. After I check back the file, it's time to send. I use a service called Massive to send large media files, which is a pay per gig transfer service with very fast upload download speeds. While that upload finished, I went ahead, emailed back my client to make sure that they knew what I was sending them and that the editor would have everything that they need to rebuild the timeline on their end. The editor took this back inside Premiere Pro, added graphics, rebuilt the crossfades, and exported out the deliverable at its final aspect ratio. And there we have it. That's the full process from start to finish. This was done last year, so a few of my grading processes have changed, my node tree has changed, uh, but hopefully this gives you a bit of an example of how a typical project runs, especially with things like reviews, timeframes, applying grades and resolve is obviously a hugely important part of the role, but a large part of the role is managing client expectations, making sure that everyone's happy and on the same page throughout every stage of the process. It doesn't really matter how you prefer to work, 
The exact details of your workflow don't have to match mine, as long as the client is happy and can see that you're being transparent and that their notes are being taken to heart. This video took me a long time to do. Um, I kind of forgot about it as well. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, comment down below what part you enjoyed and give my channel a subscribe. Also go check out my website. I actually have some color grading merch. I have color grading posters. I'm really proud of these posters. Uh, they're in my suite at the moment and they look beautiful. They come framed or non-framed, depending on your preference. Free global shipping. You can choose your currency up the top of the website. Go check them out and let me know what you think below in the comments. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Cheers.